Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Backyard Garage. So on today's episode, it's kind of a mishmash of things. Um, I got a couple things I got to do. So let's jump over to my board and I'll show you what I got to get done. Okay, so here is my board that I did. Um, a lot of things that I got done. Um, I got the, the heat and AC got deleted. I got, the, I don't need to do the torque converter transmission until I can figure out if that um, fixed my issue with that vacuum leak. Um, I got the frame rail connectors in. The brakes are pretty much done. I just finished those and I'll jump back in here in a second here. Door panels on, sun visors. I got the, um, it's kind of dark in here, but I got the brackets on. So I just got to get the actual visors. So I got to start looking for those. Man, those suckers are expensive. If anybody has a pair they want to sell me that are black, drop it in the comments or contact me via email. Um, my email address is in my about section on my video here. Um, front speakers, I got those all fixed up. Hazard lights, it was just a, um, a relay, so I replaced that relay. I'm going to circle back on the wheels and tires here in a little bit. Um, I re-put the brakes on there because after I fixed them, they were leaking again, and I'll show you those in a second here. The headlights, I got to get those fixed because for some reason, the springs aren't working right, and I just got to get in there and figure some stuff out. I got the backup camera installed, and then my horn stopped working, so I got to put a new horn in. So... Um, yeah, let's jump in. So I'll tell you what, working with these brakes is such a pain. Um, this kept leaking right at the banjo bolt, the fitting back here. As you can see, this piece that I have here is different than the block that I was previously using where I used the adapter to adapt it. I actually finally found one of these things. And um, it's just a 10, M10, um, this part's an M10. And then that's a 3 8 24. But to find this exact piece right here, it's like pulling teeth. So if you need that, I'll drop a link to the um, place where I got that. Because they are super hard to find. Especially when you're trying to connect the, the, the steel line straight in. Without having to use uh, the rubber pieces and everything like that. But I finally got it. It's not leaking. And I think we're good to go on those. So... Yeah, that's where we're at with the brake situation. Alrighty, so we are actually onto the horn and getting that fixed. So, <clears throat> the way that I knew that the horn was bad was when he pushed the button. Not sure if you hear that click, but it's clicking. So, I could hear the relay down there clicking, which means I'm getting power. So, the next thing that I did is I took my voltmeter and I just plugged it into the horn wire, which is right here. And then I grounded it and then I went and pushed the button. And I noticed that I had 12 volts going here. So I knew that that was good. And then the next thing that I did is I bench tested this actual horn here. And the way that I did that, I just put a positive on this terminal, negative on there, and nothing happened. So that just told me right then there that the horn is actually bad. Nothing's happening. Brand new. It's not working. So it's kind of frustrating. I'm going to see if I can get that returned. I'm not sure. So it's what I did is... I actually went ahead and ordered a horn kit off of good old Amazon, and this is a dual horn. The one that was in there, it was super high pitched, and this has got a high and a low, so it's a super loud horn. So we're going to be getting this installed. So um, let me get you set up, and I'll show you how to install it. It's pretty simple. All right, here we go. So the first thing that I did is I took these horns, and it came with this yellow wire here. This end was on it. I just put a connector on here so I could loop it up back here because this will be ground and then it came with two red wires I spliced them together and put this fitting on so it will fit into the harness which is right down here so that's what I did and then this will plug into the harness there so the next thing that I got to do or that I did was behind here let me pull this out of the way and see if you can see it but behind this there's this half inch bolt that goes through here and this is where I'm actually going to mount the horns so all I got to do is just bolt them in and then bolt these on and then plug in the power and they should be good to go so um, let me uh, get them screwed in all right so I started recording and I started messing around trying to get both horns in however there just wasn't enough room so what I did is I just got a single horn in here for now. Um, 
no matter which way I try to configure these, I couldn't get them to work. I guess I could make a special bracket. However, I don't have the materials and it's the horn. So is what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put one in and if this one goes out, I guess I got a backup. So that's pretty exciting. So the horn is done. Um, and now the next thing that I'm gonna jump on, so I'm actually gonna jump on these headlights here. Um, there's some springs and some adjustment screws and stuff and they gotta go on just right. So I'm not exactly sure how they go on correctly, but let's find out together. So let's, let me pick up what I'm doing over here and then we'll jump in on that. Just in case I forget, but here is what the horn is actually sounding like as well. It's kind of loud, it's really loud, but it's uh, super high pitched. So um, I'm just ripping this light apart, figuring it out. And then once I get it back together, I'll jump over here and I'll show you exactly what I did. So hang in there and I'll be back in a sec. Okay, so. Here's the first thing you just want to do to get the bulb out, or not to get the bulb out, but to get this ring and everything off, is you want to remove the this trim piece here, this bezel. It's just three Phillips screws. And this is more or less just um, showing you where the spring placement on this is. Then you pull this out. Then you're gonna take the three screws holding this light bulb in off. There we go. And set those three screws aside. Next, you're going to pull the actual light out and unplug it, which mine unplugged when I pulled it out. Next thing you're going to do is you're, you're going to have your adjuster screws. You need to take this out. So take the top adjuster screw all the way out. And you'll probably have to loosen up this side one here. So loosen the side one quite a bit. And then take the top one all the way out. Okay, I added a light, and then I removed this top adjuster screw, which goes in up here. I'm not sure if that's picking it up. Let me look. It's hard to see. Give me just a sec here. Alrighty, there we go. So there's an adjuster here, an adjuster that was up here. Um, so I took the adjuster out. Then you got the spring here. Now, if you look down in here, it's hard to see. I'll put a picture up, but there's a little bracket and this spring actually goes in. And as you see, it's got two different sides to it. The side that's actually bent more will go up um, into that hole and then hook onto the top of the, the little, there's like a little stud in here. So you'll just put that in. So let me do that here quick. I gotta go grab a tool and I'll be right back. Okay, so it's kind of it's kind of hard to see just because the camera angle, but this spring, like I said, it goes in like this, and then this hooks up on the top. And you'll notice on the back of here, there's a little a groove that the spring actually sits in. So you slide that in, and you can look up from the top and and see what you're doing, and then get it in. And then there we go. That's good, that's on. So the next thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna take this trim piece here. So we're working with the, let me zoom you out again. Sorry, there's a lot of back forth. I gotta check my camera and make sure I get the angles. So is you'll see this trim piece here on either side. You're gonna see these little grooves right here. That spring is actually gonna hook up into that groove right here. It's gonna come up. And then that's what's going to give you your attention. So let me get that hooked in and I'll show you kind of what it looks like.
Okay, not sure if this is picking it up. Oops. Sorry, I got my weight and stuff. But once you get it hooked on down there, you're going to take this right here and you're going to slide it onto this adjuster right there. So, while keeping tension on that spring. And then after you get it in the groove, you'll just tighten this, this one, this side down just a little bit, like I'm doing here. Not a lot, but just a little bit. And you'll notice that this is being held in and everything with spring tension. And then it's what you can do, or is what you do next is you take this bolt here. Sorry, I got everything all zoomed in and out and I apologize. Next thing you're gonna do now is you're gonna take this, the adjustment screw, and you'll notice that there's a groove on the top and that's where it sits in on these, on this ring here. So let me get this in and then I'll kinda pick up the camera and get a closer shot of everything. But you're gonna slide the top of the light in on that groove and then screw it into the car. Okay, so here's a little bit closer look here. Right here is where the spring clipped on, like that. And then there's the adjuster, and it's got a it's got a groove in it like that, except for, you know, it doesn't look like that. But it just slides into that little slot that I showed you on the adjuster screw. And then the same with over here. So that's kind of where we're at. And then, as you notice, this right here, it's all sawed not moving anymore the spring is holding this side back and then this whole cup just kind of pivots in there so there's tension all the way around so is what that does is it allows you to move the lights back and forth so when you screw this in it's going to adjust the light towards this way and if you screw that one in, it's going to move it up and down so when you screw that in it's going to move it up when you unscrew it, it's going to move it down so yeah that's kind of where we're at so if you just watch this while I spin just very subtle but what's happening is the light is actually turning and it's going straight so let me get these screwed in and adjusted and I'll be back okay so now that I have this installed and ready to go the next thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna get your wire for your light bulb pull it out I'll take your light bulb and plug it in Next, you're gonna take this ring here and just, so what I do is I put a screw in it. It's kind of hard to get all this in sometimes. But I get this ring, there we go. I drop the screw. But is what you do is you put this in, so it's straight up and down, and you put your ring on. take your screws and screw them in and get it going. Next you're going to take this trim piece, slide it in, and then put the three screws that hold that in. There we go. Now is what you're gonna do is you're gonna adjust your headlights, but the way it is right now and how everything it is, let me put you over here. It gives you access to your adjustment screws here. 
There's one up here where I can adjust it, turn it, adjust it up. Then I have the other adjustment screw right here where I could turn that and adjust it left and right. So that's how you uh, put the spring into the light and that's how you get it all attached. Alrighty, so there we go. So that is how you adjust the lights. I apologize, it's really hard to get those angles because I gotta be in the way. I got the tripod and there's just stuff on me. So hopefully you guys got the gist of things. It's pretty easy to do. Um, just took a little bit of research at figuring out how to get everything in and make it fit correctly, but we got it. So next thing we could do here is we're gonna go over to the board and we can mark off the headlights. Alrighty, headlights, check. All right, so the filler panels, let me get back to those. Um, up here, I got the original filler panels. They're rough, they're beat up. My thinking is, is I'm just gonna go ahead and um, use those and put those on. Um, because they're rubber, but they're flexible. I did buy one panel, and let me take you over here and show you it. I bought this one, and it'll work, however, it's a hard plastic, and when I kind of lined it up, it it didn't line up like I liked it. It was really, yeah, it looked it didn't line up, and it's an aftermarket part. It's not rubber like the original, so I had to um, rethink that process and everything. So that's what we're doing, and then yeah, so that's kind of where I'm at. So I haven't started this car for I don't know. It's probably been a couple months. So I'm gonna get you guys set up behind it. I'm gonna do a cold start and then you guys can hear it start up and run because it's been a while since I ran it and I just kinda need to run it every now and then because a car that sets is a car that doesn't, yeah. The more a car sets, the bad, the worse it is for it. So let me get her fired up. I would love to take her for a cruise, but as you can see, I got about two feet of snow in my way, so I can't do that. Here we go. Well, everybody, that's actually going to be a wrap for today's video. I appreciate you all watching. Um, if you have any questions or comments, drop them down below. Um, if you have any visors for the car, let me know because I am still looking for those. Um, super hard to come by. They're all on back order, just like everything else for this car. But um, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. We'll check you all next time. Peace.